Good day everyone. So today I'm going to show you how you can contribute to South Africa's red list uh, for plants and animals. Uh, so as you all know, or as many of you know, uh, the crew program works with citizen scientists to monitor and conserve threatened plants in South Africa. And recently we've moved our data submission system to iNaturalist. Um, so we've created some projects on iNaturalist that can help you <coughs> Uh, submit your data and observations uh, to the Red List team and that data is used for updating the conservation assessments of our threatened plants and animals. Um, so the first thing we would have to do is um, I'm going to take you through uh, two other projects that we have on iNaturalist uh, that is uh, related to the Red List program. Uh, so the first one, if you go to community and projects um, and you search for South African uh, red list, uh, red list plants and animals, <coughs> and you click go, uh, you will come up with this project, the South African red list plants and animals project. So this is an umbrella project that we developed. Uh, so I'm just going to go into that project. Uh, so this is the umbrella project and what we've done is we've created for each of the different categories um, of, of um, the red list, we've created a separate project that falls under the umbrella. Uh, and so the first thing you have to do is to actually join all of these projects. Um, so you have to join the umbrella project and then you can also look at all the other sub projects that are under the umbrella project and you can join whichever ones uh, you'd like. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the Red List um, Plants projects. So there you can see there's the project for vulnerable species, for near threatened, for endangered, um, and so on. And what we've done to create these projects is that in each of these projects we have um, selected all the species that are listed as endangered currently and any time that an observation of that species is uh, posted onto iNaturalist, it will automatically collect into this um, project. Um, so what's really important to know is that this is only a collections project, so it just um, notifies us that a threatened species has been posted onto iNaturalist, um, but it doesn't mean that there is sufficient data with that observation. So in the next project, I will show you how to actually make your observation useful for the Red List team. Um, just the, the observation with the locality, uh, it is useful for us to know where the plants are. Um, but if you really want to give us um, the ability to use the data for Red Listing, then you have to add it to the Red List East Africa project, which I will show you in a moment. Um, so back to um, this project. So. Firstly, you have to join the umbrella project. Um, I'm already joined. Um, so that button over there will be join project. Um, and then you can go to each of the sub projects and join those as well. So I'm just going to open this one so you can see. Um, so this is a South African Red List Plants Vulnerable Project. And so you can um, also join that particular project. So once you've joined all these projects, when you post an observation, that is uh, listed as a threatened plant species um, or a taxa of conservation concern, so either um, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, or rare, critically rare. Um, when you go to your observation, you will see that this is one of my observations of Echostachys incarnus. And although I haven't added, added it to any particular projects, uh, you can see that it's already notified me that um, it has been collected into the South African Red List Plants Vulnerable Project because the species is listed as vulnerable and it's already in the Plants and Animals Project. Now, there's no associated data with this particular record, so we only have a picture and the locality information, but what we need for red listing is we need the um, population numbers and the uh, threats. Um, so now I'm quickly going to show you how I um, add that information. So 
So first things first, let me let me just go to the actual red list is Africa project because you would have to join that project as well before you um, start uh, uh, contributing observations. Um, so let's just go, I'm going to use the search bar this time, uh, red list, um, bracket, small s, capital AFR, and close the bracket. And you'll see this one, red list is Africa. Uh, this is the project where you submit your data. So I'm just going to go into the project so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so here you can see the red list is Africa project. Um, and obviously you can, you can join this project as well, uh, which will be great. So I've already joined this project. So in your case, if you haven't joined yet, this will say join this project. And just remember when you do join the project, please... Um, uh, indicate that you would like to trust the um, administrators of this project with your hidden coordinates um, and that is just to ensure that um, poachers and other baddies don't get hold of your very sensitive data um, and the administrators on this project is staff um, of Sanby and uh, people that are working directly with the red list. Um, okay, so once you've joined that particular project, I'm going to go back to this observation. So here I have uh, Ikea Stackers in Karnas. It's listed as vulnerable. So now I'm going to add this to the Red List East Africa project. So you do that. And then you'll see that this uh, window appears with the data, um, or the associated data that we require for the Red List assessments. Um, so the first thing is the population size and estimate. Um, so I, I know that there was about um, 50 plants at that particular site. So I'm going to select F for 10 to 50 and the, the codes are down here in the description. Um, then population size. So in this box we would like you, if you have counted the species or have you counted the number of plants, you can put that in. But then also give us an estimate of the area that you saw the plants in. Um, so sometimes when we're walking in the mountains in a, in a large area, you just uh, indicate in kind of an estimated area where you saw the plants. Uh, and then sometimes if you're in a very small fragmented site, you can just put the, the total size of the site and you can estimate that. Um, so this was, um, we saw about um, 40 plants um, and we sample the area of um, about 300 meters by 300 meters. Okay, and then you can add that. Then population threats. Um, at this particular site, um, there was agriculture, uh, expansion, this is one of the threats. Um, and if you can also um, indicate what the severity of the threat is. So how likely is this threat to impact the species? So you can say low, medium, high or very high. Um, so this particular farmer at the moment is very conservation aware. Um, so we're just going to put that as low. Uh, and there were some alien invasives on site. Um, but also the landowners clearing the site, and so um, it's also very low. Um, and then also, if you can include the habitats, um, so this was in the Ronostafelt, you can add that. Um, and if you did collect a specimen, you can also put your specimen number in there as well. So if you click Add to Project, uh, you will now see that this Red List is Africa project appears. And we have the observation fields um, that has now been completed. And so this information can now be used by the red listing team when they're doing conservation assessments. They'll know how many plants there is at that particular place. Um, and that is incredibly useful for them. So if they, if they don't know, if, if it's only in the South African Red List Plants and Animals Project, um, we don't have that associated data. And uh, we absolutely need that to be able to um, accurately um, assess the species. Um, 
So, so please make sure that uh, if you do find a threatened plant in the field and you post an observation on iNaturalist that you add it to the Red List East Africa project. Um, and then also we, uh, with engaging with uh, some of the volunteers that um, is submitting data, uh, sometimes you don't know that you found a plant when you were taking the, um, the photo in the field. Uh, so we just recommend that you uh, make it a habit just to look at when you're photographing a particular species, that you just take note of how many plants there were, just in case um, it is a threatened plant species and you only, once you've added it to INAT, um, it uh, adds it to the collection project and you can see, uh, then you still have some of that data available. And you are able to give us the uh, population numbers and the threats. Okay, so uh, there are several ways that you can check if you if your observations are um, uh, one of the red list uh, threatened species. Um, so one, if you are observer that observed more than 50 threatened plants, you will get an email from one of our team asking you to um, con to contribute those observations to the Red List East Africa project. Um, but if you'd like to check your own observations, uh, you can just go to the um, to the Explore tab, um, or you can just go to your observations. Let's do it this way. So I'm going to go to my observations, uh, and then you click on the filter, uh, and then in the filter you can add uh, South African uh, Red List Plants and Animals Project. Sorry about that. Went a bit too quickly there. Uh, so you go to the Umbrella Project. Click on um, update search. And then this will show you all the species that you have that is um, listed as a threatened plant species. Uh, so then what you can do is you can go through each of these and then add them to the red list project. Uh, so this is how you know for your own observations. So if you run this filter for your own observations, you'll be able to see all the plants uh, or animals. Uh, if you choose to do animals as well, uh, you can see all the species that are listed on the, th on, the on the red list and you can add them to the Red List East Africa project. Okay, thank you very much and I hope that we get lots of observations in our Red List East Africa project.